I'll do mine if you don't mind. <laughs> so, uh, as it says up there, my name is Patrick Viney, and I'm a learning technologist at Northumbria University. And for two years now, I've been working specifically with degree apprenticeships. And the journey that I've taken has taken me through doing a requirements appraisal to see exactly what technology degree apprenticeships need within the university, going through the various options to fill those, fulfill those needs, and actually implementing a solution. And today what I want to do is give you a taster for all the work that I've done. I can't summarize everything in, in, into uh, 15 minutes, but give you a taster of what I've done and the solutions that I've come up with. And what I try to do is bring very simple, very practical, very easy solutions to quite complex problems. <laughs> uh, and this is where I'm going today. Uh, that's a quote from the Times uh, Higher Education in April the 1st this year. Degree apprenticeships are quietly revolutionizing higher education. And what I'm going to be talking about is what makes a degree apprenticeship different from a normal degree? Why does it need different technology? And then looking at the gaps and the solutions. So what does make it different? The funding model. I've got a 16-year-old son who I'm trying to talk into going into a degree of apprenticeship, and I just went up to him one day and said, said to him, £100,000. And he said, what, Dad? He said, £100,000. That is the difference between if you go on a three-year university degree and you end up with a £46,000 debt, and you go on a degree of apprenticeship for three years, and you earn money whilst you're on that degree of apprenticeship. That is the difference for him. So where's this money come from? It comes from a thing called the apprenticeship levy. Every business in this country which has over three million pounds worth of uh, wages bill has to pay 0.5% of their wages into an apprenticeship levy. That apprenticeship levy, they can use then to train apprentices within their organization. The rest goes into a pot, and smaller and medium-sized businesses can use it. So there's a lot of funding from the government going into these apprenticeships, and now they can be at degree level. And this is why it's changing the face of universities, because we find in some part-time courses, say a part-time course in management, where the company would have paid in previously, they'll be putting apprentices in. So we are seeing this gradual change of where we're going because of this fu funding model. It's obviously very, very complex, the funding model, but basically the individual benefits by not having to pay the university fees are paid, paid by the, or the organization. The employers benefit because they get somebody who's gone all the way through university specifically looking at their business. And so, so it's a win-win situation for everybody but the employers who are paying into the apprenticeship levy and not using their apprenticeships. The next big change for the university is we're used to the student university relationship. The big change is now our partner is the employer and the professional bodies. So we've got these people, other, other people, not only do we sell the courses to the employers, but we have this relationship with them, which means that our, our insular technologies the likes of our VLEs, the likes of all the technologies we've got, which just go between us and the student. How do we get them that out to the outside world? So we've suddenly got these new uh, stakeholders. The relationship between workplace learning and academic learning, a lot of undergraduates are fully full-time students. An apprentice will be working 80% of their time working and 20% at university. How do we create that synergy between what they're doing at work and university to enhance their, lear enhance their learning. Yes, traditional degrees, there are some nursing teaching where that happens, and they're the ones I've used for models for that. And the final one is, once they get the degree, they don't finish their apprenticeship, they've got to go on for an endpoint assessment. So we're doing more work, and the endpoint assessment is set down by government apprenticeship standards. So that's what makes degree apprenticeships different. And the tell need I've got up there, this is the gap our technology and the way we tended to use it, the VLE, lecture recording, it's all about getting things out from the university, the institution, to the individual. Whereas in this case, it's how does the, the individual have a, an easy means of gathering, storing, cataloging evidence? How do we get them to start reflecting on it, deeper reflection on their learning? 
and there's specific logistics we've got to record for degree apprenticeships. We've got to record how much time they spend off the job training, how much time their employers spend there. This is quite difficult things. We've got to have records of mentor meetings and workplace visits. There's a thing called a tripartite meeting where you've got to have four every, four every year between uh, a, a member of university staff, the apprentice, and the mentor in the apprentice's workplace. And what we also need is a means to share information securely with the apprentice, university tutors, and then out into the workplace as well. And our systems tend not to do that. And as I've said, endpoint assessment, we need this portfolio of evidence, and we also need minimal administration because like with everything, we don't have uh, huge budgets for administration. So at Northumbria, we came up with at CMDA stands for Chartered Manager Degree Apprenticeships, and it was a Chartered Manager that we came up with this model of how uh, we gather evidence from the workplace and how we use it. And there was three levels of it. The first level, the informal capture of evidence. How do we encourage the apprentice to capture the evidence in its raw state in the workplace, whether it be documents, photographs, videos, and meeting records? And I will be showing you a live example of that today how we do that and it's got to be with the mobile phone it's got to be that simple click done and you've got it there the next thing is a more formal way of doing it this is where we're creating the synergy between the evidence they've collected in the workplace and the learning encouraging reflection through reflective templates journal entries blogs and building up on those experiences and recording their experiences not just the evidence of them and the final formal part of this is how do we then take the evidence they've captured, the resources, and put them into uh, the, uh, for, formative, for summative assessments such as assignments and the portfolios. So moving on from there, what I'm going to do is just take you, take you straight through to a quick demonstration of how I've used uh, an app called PebblePad to do this. The PebblePad is known as an e-portfolio system, but we're learning using it as an individual learning system. So what I'm going to show you is a quick demonstration of how I might record a reflection, and then I'll show you, show you something that I've recorded this morning, and one of the workbooks we use for recording mental meetings and things like that. So if I go on to here, I want to record 20% time off. This does cause a problem for people. And like I say, I go for simple things. And I've created a simple template here. I'm in the student system here. I can just click that. And off the job training record. And I'm going to call this one day eight at university. And then select a date for it. L literally, I'm making things as as easy as possible and then just tick in the box what I've done and all I require the students to do after that is give it a number of hours and this way I actually log what they're doing that's all they've got to do to, to record their time off and at the end of the first year now we're at the stage where we're getting audits of these records. And these records, what we can do is pull them out of the system. So if I close that now, what I'll do is I'll show you how that's actually pulled into what we call a workbook. So if I go into there, this is a workbook which is provided to each of the students here. and. The workbook creates, pulls all these records together. There's a number of records I've shown you, or one record I've shown you there, which is the off-the-job learning record, off-the-job training record. There's reflective records, there's mentor meetings in there. All these records automatically come into this workbook here. So I've got my workbook there. If I go down there and have a look at the off-the-job off learning records, you can see that I've got the number wrong, but day eight of university is already in there and it's been taken away from the amount of time that I should be spending off the job training. And that's all the person has to do. 
Also within there, I've got learning records. So I've got reflective learning records and I've got in there a record of an experience that I've had today. So some of you might recognize the location there. I can take a quick photograph from the phone of any document that I want. I can reflect on it. I can then reflect on the keynote speaker. I can take photographs and do this while it's happening and it's all there, ready for assessment. That was a reflection on the first speaker there. And I've even got my presentation as a PowerPoint there. And I just built that this morning as I was watching. And it's as quick as making the notes in any format that you want. Uh, and you've got the presentation uh, there, ready for submission for assessment. And then after that, if I wanted to share that with an employer, it's as simple as clicking a button, say, I want to share with people. And I put my employer's email address in there and the student can do that. So we've got this very, very simple system uh, there which allows me to share outside the university and that's one of the crucial factors which we didn't have. So, so really in summing up, <laughs> I've taken a whistle stop tour of a lot of work there but there is this need for degree apprenticeships to go outside the university and share and this is the solution we've come up with. I'm sorry I couldn't spend more time going over it with you, but I hope that's been a useful taster. Thank you very much. So as I said, I've got a very vested interest in understanding all of this myself. But um, the, the audience have come up with some questions, so yeah. you can whip through them fairly quickly to let the uh, yeah. last presentation have their full 20 minutes. So. First of all, a bit contentious, you might give a quick answer to this because it's probably quite a long one, this value. If there's such good value economically, why isn't everybody doing one? <laughs> right, uh, I'll, a, a quick one. If they're good value economically, uh, they're only for, pr for programmes where there's a demand for the programmes and there's the employer demand. So, and the government has to set down the standards for each programme, so it's only programmes where government has set down the standards for them, so we're quite restricted in the num number of programmes. And from a university's perspective, it's more expensive to deliver a degree apprenticeship for the same amount of money as it is for an undergraduate degree because of the uh, endpoint assessment and because of the support there. So, so it's a lot more expensive for the university, so a lot of universities are, are stepping back. Oh, interesting. I haven't heard that one before. We've got some more questions now. Have you used Pebble Pad to replace your VLE? No, we use it completely alongside the VLE. I, I consider them to be totally uh, complementary. The VLE is very much about the organisation given to the student. We put our uh, lecture captures on there, we put everything on there. We use Pebble Pad for the students to capture and send back to us. So it's completely the opposite. So it will never replace our VLE, but they work very well together. Okay. Um, then the model is designed for a non-technical subject. How can this model be translated into a programming or network engineering discipline from an evidential perspective? Right. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to, I feel like saying pass on that one. <laughs> but yeah, it was a specific model. It, so it, it was a specific model designed for uh, the chartered manager, but even with anything, a, a technical subject, you've still got to gain your evidence yet yeah, the technical evidence, you've still got to reflect on it and you've still got to submit it. So we've got those three stages and the first challenge is always getting people to record that evidence. So whether that evidence be uh, something physical like a photograph or a video, video or whether it be uh, a program, whether it be a website somebody's done, whether it be a piece of art, they can still reflect on it. They, they can still have, this is my piece of art. This is my reflection on how I've done it, and this is how it's assessed. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm going to combine two questions. So, it, one has asked, how do you tackle the degree component? And then a second question was, has there been a challenge for staff adjusting to the teaching in block rather than more continually? Uh, the, the challenge with all the degree components are, is the employers want that degree focused towards their staff and their staff's needs so with the manager for example we've got an open program 
which is one attendance once a week where apprentices will come from a number of organisations. We've also got a closed programme where they come for two weeks every semester. And then we've got another closed programme where they come once a week. So you've got different modes of attendance and you want to have the, old, the employers wanting specific tailoring of the course to suit their so needs. So it is really employer-driven? It is employer-driven. The, the influence of employers can't be emphasised enough because they've got a choice between one university and another university, and it's money. They'll, they'll, they'll choose the ones that are best. Brilliant. Okay, well, we've got loads more questions, but unfortunately we've run out of time. So I'm sure that Patrick will be available in the um, space downstairs or in the foyer after the session. Yeah. So please do ask him about that because I think, as he's uh, mentioned, it's, it's a growing type of uh, course delivery. So it's good to be uh, briefed up on it. And so lastly, but not least, we have um, a consortium. Of, um, <laughs> We have a little ensemble coming up. We're going to do a little routine. <laughs>